It'll, this will cover both the Unicode and some of the recent features in version 11 as well. This is my favorite Unicode demo. Um, because one of the things, and Unicode has everything. It doesn't just have Chinese and Japanese and Korean and uh, Bulgarian. It also has chess pieces. And that allows us to just, uh, if you have the right keyboard, of course, for typing chess pieces. I don't know if there is a, I don't know if there's a chess keyboard available. Probably there is. Uh, I haven't found it yet, but you can easily cut and paste them out of a web page somewhere. If you find a web page with chess pieces on it, probably you can just cut and paste them into a Unicode session without further ado. So here are some variables that I use to set up, give us the order that the offices are arranged. We have two colors. And then with a null dot catenate, we can create the indices. So we can say, well, first we want the, the black rook and then the black knight and so on. And we can uh, use, we rotate the, the indices uh, for the white pieces because the pawns come first. And we have our array of chess pieces. We can expand it, of course, which fills it with spaces. And we can now do things, you know, we can do computations. Board plus dot equals white pawn counts the number of white pawns on each row of the chessboard. We can create a form and put a grid object in where we just put that array board, which contained the chess pieces in as the, the data in the grid, and then set the, the width so that it looks a bit nicer. We can put some, say we're going to play chess in Greece, we can put Greek uh, labeling onto the... Uh, the chessboard, create a couple of background colors and a checkerboard pattern, and we're ready to go. And of course, oh yes, and to not, uh, not irritate the Latins, we'll put in some Roman numerals down the side. Okay, so, so we, we can now treat all of these characters just like the characters that we're used to. And uh, so let's do a little bit of arithmetic here. There's a bug. I was, I mean, I was, I'm usually worried about the Russians in the audience because every time, <laughs> every time I do this presentation, there's a Russian chess player. There's a. <laughs> Last time it was that I had the king and queen reversed. I, I looked this up on the internet. I must, you know, I didn't do sufficient quality control on it. I apologize. Okay, so what are the unique chess pieces? Well, let's do a frequency count of the chess pieces and sort it. So here's an array of the frequency count. Okay, there are most spaces. Put that into an array. Ah, and let's show off some of Adrian's stuff. So if you now right-click on that, where well, you get the the pop-up, if you click on the pie chart, wait for .NET Framework to be loaded, we have a chart with the uh, frequency distribution of chess pieces. And, of course, the interfaces to things like Excel are also all work for this. So if you're using COM or .NET, you create an Excel object Add a workbook. I'm going to go really fast here. If you want these examples explained, um, come see me afterwards. So into the active sheet range A1 to H8, put the chessboard values. Call the auto fit method on each of the first eight columns. Um, get hold of the interior property of each cell in that range. The monadic squad here is a new feature in version 11 that takes a collection as its argument and materializes that as an array in the workspace. So we get those 64 cells as a vector. And then the interior has a property called color. And if we get hold of the chess board background colors indexed by the cell types, do the base 256 
decode of that, we get the number that Excel wants to see to color those uh, cells. Okay, then we'll, we'll move some piece, move a piece, move the pawn forward, put that into the second sheet, move a knight, put that into the third sheet. Uh, on those two sheets, the first eight columns call the auto fit. So that made 16 calls to auto fit methods in different, uh, different columns in two different sheets. Okay, so here are the names of the, the sheets. Extract the sheets collection. Set the names to the different uh, moves. And then, so if we click on one of these now, we can see that you know, this is what the board looked like after moving. Yeah, very useful application, clearly. Um, and then we can extract the sheets, indexing them by the names of the sheets, and get the center cells for those two sheets. Or we can just say, well, get the used range for all of the sheets, and get all of the data out as a three-element nested array. So that sort of covers Unicode and arrays of objects the class extensions um, in version 11, very briefly. <laughs>